thanks for joining us tonight. My name is Mike Tellerino, CEO of K9 for Veterans. And tonight, I've, I got a, an awesome lady. She's our, our guest here tonight, Teresa Phillips. Teresa is the CEO and founder of Be a Hero to a Hero. Teresa, start off by telling us a little bit, number one, about yourself, because you have a very interesting background. <laughs> so why don't you tell us a little about yourself and then about your mission statement for Be a Hero to a Hero. Well, I, I happen to be a minister, and I'm married to a veteran, and I pastor a church, and my husband retired from 30 years in the military, and that year that he retired, we wanted to do something in honor of his retirement. So he and a friend of his had gone to Heinz Veterans Hospital and saw somebody bring somebody a stocking. I said, we can do that. And so our church said, we should do that. So that year we started with 22 stockings and we gave out 22 stockings and I think we gave out about 30 gift bags to the veterans at the Veterans Center mm -hmm. or at the American Legion. And then it grew from there. And the next year we took an 18-wheeler semi Whoa. completely full to Corbin, Kentucky and delivered it to the homeless. People came out of the woodwork really? for that. People came out of the hills and had blankets and pillows, and children came out and said, can I have a toy? Some had never had a toy. Really? And we had one man came down, he had a machete on his leg, no. and he says, I haven't been in civilization in 10 or 15 years, and he said, but I've come to see if I can have a little bit of food. Oh my God. And so we loaded up his backpack, yeah. and we had a tremendous time doing that and giving that out, but our mission, you know, I'm just going to be frank and just say God spoke to us and said, I love what you did for these people, All right. but I've called you to the veterans. And so we had to go back and we actually had to repent, Mike. And we said, thank you, God, for blessing what we did, but help us. And it escalated. And this last Christmas, even during COVID, we delivered... 1,607 recipients received That's from VA I mean, to a hero. And this year is 2,000. Doing that, going to the veterans' a home or the VA hospital or, or wherever our veterans are, are at, these stockings, I mean, some of them don't even get visits. Some of them no. have no outside no. connection at all. So by bringing the stocking into them, it's spreading literally the Christmas cheer. That was the whole thing is that we wanted to give something to someone mm -hmm. and we knew we could do this. And we, the first year we were, we actually went down into Mantino and you know what Mantino right. is. And we did, for two years we did a USO show there. You know, we sang and we prayed and we oh, nice. sang carols and brought in a choir. Yeah. And then after two years they said, why don't you just deliver these to everybody? Right. They gave us the whole hospital. And we started walking in the rooms, praying for people. Um, nursing homes opened up, other veteran shelters opened up, and they said, would you please come, would you please come? And the, the thing that upset us, not in a negative way, but ripped our heart, was the amount of people that said, we have never had anyone come for our right. veterans. That's what I was just They'll saying. They'll come for everybody, sure. for everybody. But we've never had anyone come for our veterans. And as we were in a home and this woman was taking us around and he delivered the stockings, she said, I'm a veteran. And I said, ma'am, where did you serve? And she said, I served in the Army three years. We reached over and got a stocking and gave it to her. And she had tears pouring out of her eyes. She says, I've never had anything. You know. And these, these men and women, the tears I know. of... You are remembering me. Oh, and we sing with them. That little we basket, pray with them. We laugh with them because we feel that they're valid. And if it wasn't for their sacrifice, right, I right. wouldn't have the freedom to do what I'm doing today. You, right, you wouldn't be passing those out. Oh no, oh no. You know, I mean, I think it's. Uh, I mean, there's a lot of great causes out there that are yeah. doing a lot of great things for. And you're veterans. one of them. Oh, thank you. <laughs> but being a veteran myself. And I, I've been to many veterans' hospitals and, uh, you know, uh, nursing homes and stuff. And, you know, it, it's so sad that they have no outside connection. And I'm going to tell you, that stocking could just brighten up their whole attitude, their whole day. 
So it's really an amazing thing. And just a small little gesture like that uh, to help them realize that someone does care. You know, we do, and we I don't care do. for the sake of caring. We care because we right. really care. Our mission is to the medically confined veteran right. and homeless. And this last year, we found a couple women's shelters. So this year, we're collecting primarily with some of the things that are needed for women. But it's important that we remember the people who paid this sacrifice. Right. My father was World War II. My grandfather was World War I. My husband was Kosovo, Bosnia, Panama, Gulf One, Gulf, you know, he's been in all of it. Your husband was also on 9-11. 9-11 with President Bush, yes. Right. He was part of NAOC. He was the second plane, wow. not as one, you know what I mean? Right. We're the plane that assists the president. Right. And, you know, as you know, when you see combat and when you see trauma, there is trauma. Right. And one of the things that we found that, can I, can I share a little bit oh, about this? Oh, please. This is a beanie baby. And we we hunt for these all over. They're, and the reason, so cute. and the reason is because a beanie baby can go in a microwave, or it can go in a freezer. But only certain beanie babies. Yeah, it has to be the Thai beanie baby. Okay. It has to be the Thai beanie baby. Now I pulled the tag off. Thai. It has to be a Thai beanie baby, because these were created by the man who had a son with a broken arm, I believe it was, and he made it as an ice pack, so his How son awesome. would put that on his on right. his cast. And so this is not only adorable at Christmas time, but this also is medicinal. But I'm going to tell you something else. It takes them back to their childhood, <laughs> and it lets them feel the spirit of Christmas. Right. We have one gentleman, and I believe he was in Vietnam, and he's been in a home since he's been in Vietnam because he's had so much trauma. And he has on the windowsill in his room every Beanie Baby. Really? And when he knows we're coming, he stands outside the door waiting for his <laughs> stocking. We've had so many of these wonderful stories. I could go on forever. And so the Beanie Baby is vitally important. Plus, we give them a bag of goodies. It has mouthwash, lip balm, body creams, toothbrush, toothpaste, all the toiletries at our travel size. And this year we are looking for eye, um, eye drops, because, and not Visine, right. because Visine actually can scratch the cornea of the eye. But this is what we put in them, Mike. We put in soaps, creams, travel lotions. Travel size. Travel size, because that's what can fit in right. the stocking. Exactly. And if we have things that are brought in that are not travel size, we have another mission that we give them to. Because Zoe knows where they're going to go. Right. So we kind of work back and forth. Each veteran gets a T-shirt and two pairs of socks. Last year, we had somebody donate us a couple cases of Bomba socks. Good socks. And we were so thrilled because when they called us from one of the homes, they said that was so perfect for them to wear in bed. Sure. You know, but we don't have many of those left. And so that's what we put in and the Beanie Baby, plus they get a card that says Merry Christmas from Be a Hero Aww. to a Hero. And our goal really is to just be a blessing. Well, your, your mission statement says it all. Be a Hero to a Hero is a local charity, veteran focusing prim primarily on those um, in hospitals, nursing homes, and, and home, homebound. Yes, last year we did several homebound. We did what we called drop a stocking. And we, um, our veteran center gave us the names of veterans that weren't going out because of COVID right. and hadn't been out. So we did door drops and we would go and hang them on the door so that people would get stockings. How nice. Because we didn't want them to feel like they were left, left out. out. Right. And this picture here that you have here of, mm -hmm. the, of, the, of a gentleman here, he's laying in his bed. This man just touched our hearts so much. We walked into the room because at that time we could go into rooms. And they told us what rooms we could go into and right. what we couldn't. And we were, were very careful about that. And my husband Robert and I are the only ones that go into the room first. We never let any of the team in until we know that it's copacetic. And so... We walk into the room, and the nurse is in there, and she says, I'm sorry, but he's passing. Uh -huh. And so I said, can we sing? And she said, yes. 
So we began to sing, Amazing grace, how sweet the sound. All of a sudden he started to move. And I said to the team, Shh, come in quietly. And they came in and we began to sing, Silent night. Aww. How nice. The man opened his eyes and he's alive today. God bless. And it was just some heartwarming thing that warmed his heart so much. And that's this man right here. And I won't allow his face to be put on camera. Right. But the only the pictures that you see on the website, be a hero to a hero.com. Those pictures we've been given permission to put on. There's yeah. pictures that we've taken that we wouldn't put on. Right. But you know means so it, much to us. Because they remind us, every now and then the team goes through their phones and looks at the pictures and says, hey, I remember this one, I remember that right. one. Or we may even get a phone call from a home that says, I remember when you came in. They have no chaplain. They have no one. Would you come pray? Would you, because both my husband and I have been our chaplains. And so we go in, we pray, we've done funerals for these people. We, we don't just walk in and leave them. We're with them to the long haul. And if right. the family needs us, we're there. You know, it, it's got to mean so much, like you said, not only to the veteran, but to the veteran's families. Oh, yeah. That somebody cares enough. I mean, a Christmas stocking. We all take that for granted at Christmas time. And this is a Christmas stocking that you just gave me. And I'm going to yeah, cherish it. it's yours. It. Thank you so much. Um, but it, it's got to mean so much to these families as well. Just knowing that here's a veteran uh, who's suffered and has been through so much mm -hmm. and that most of the time he's neglected, he's unseen, unheard of. And, and now, forced to stuff it. Ex exactly. And now somebody thinks enough of him to come forward and, and give him a, a Christmas yeah. stocking. It doesn't seem like much, but I can imagine to But this a, all adds up. To a veteran. Yeah, it adds in up. In a hospital who's been removed from society, society yeah. that this stocking has to mean so, so much. It really does. I And one of the things that we do is that we make sure we have a bin with us at all times for women. Mm -hmm. And if we walk into a room and we see a man laying in a bed and his wife is there, we automatically give her a stocking. Oh, how nice. If we are at a home and we know that there's a couple in that room, we make sure that the wife is included. Because, you know, many of these wives suffered right along with their husbands. Well, we, we are fully aware. You know, our veterans that have PTSD, most of their mm -hmm. wives are their caregivers. Mm -hmm. And... It's been proven now that there's a secondary PTSD, mm -hmm. that it, it can have an adverse effect, oh, yeah. effect on, on, on the spouse, whether it's husband or a wife. Hey, I, I understand that because my husband has had some of his issues, and because we've only been married 15 years, and he's been out, it's only, I think, in the last couple of years that he's actually opened up and talked but he's had to come in for ministry. He's had to come in and talk. And there's some things he can't say, of course. You know right. how that is. But I remember one day I got so upset because I didn't know what it was, you know, and it was affecting me. Sure. And now it's, I'm, okay, Robert, let's talk about this. And you see women that have been through the military. We had one woman that... She was in World War II, and I'm going to tell you this, you're going to laugh. She joined World War II because she wanted to date the men because yeah. they looked great in uniform. It's really the we truth. All, we all have our reasons, it right? It was her reason, but she said she found out. That's cute. you got to hear this. She said when she found out how much power she felt she had in that gun, yeah. she said, man, I just felt like I had so much power, but when I came out, I felt lost. She said, I hear I served, I flew, I did, and, and I came out, and I was lost. And she said... I didn't fit in anywhere. Right. Here I was a woman. I felt great in my uniform, but when I came out, my uniform meant nothing. And that, Teresa, let me tell you, when we're in the military, we're told what to do, when to yeah. do it, how to do it, why we're going to do it. You know, we're all just let around and just told mm -hmm. what to do. When, when we come home, we don't have that. And when we're in the service, we have what we call a battle buddy. Somebody who's always got our back. Somebody who's mm -hmm. always watching out for us. When we come home we don't have that and that's why a lot of that feeling of being lost or yeah, you know what I do i do with myself now 
and then it's being able to share their experiences with someone. Mm -hmm. Most of our veterans, when they first come home from deployment, they won't even talk to their wives oh, of no. what they experienced or you know the, or what they what they went through. So you know it's really good that you know people know that if they know a veteran suffering with PTSD, talk to them. And thank them. Yes. When you see somebody who's wearing a veteran's hat or a, a t-shirt, right. you know, go up to them and say, welcome back. Welcome back to America. What does it take? What does it take? When we go to a school, you know, well, Reggie and I will go to a, a school and we'll talk to the sixth and seventh graders and stuff. You know, my closing statement to, to them is, look, if you're in public and you see what you think is a veteran, He's got a veteran's cap on or shirt. Mm -hmm. Walk up to them, extend your hand, shake their hand, and thank them for their, their service. It doesn't cost you anything. No. It doesn't take kindness anything. Kindness doesn't cost you. No. I remember when we first started doing this, Robert and I, we just, the first year that we went fully into this, we emptied our bank account. <laughs> we never thought about, we never thought about asking anybody for help. Yeah. We just figured we had to do it. And the church just figured, well, we'll just have to do it. So everybody in the church just did it. And then we thought, hey, what if we got community involvement in this? Mm -hmm. What if we got other people involved? They could get the same blessing that we're getting. Right. They could feel the joy that we're feeling because they helped us do it. We had one lady that came in to help fill stockings. She brought in a group all the way from Arkansas. Really? Just to fill stockings. And I think they brought us 200 Beanie Babies. And wow. they, we had Beanie Babies last year shipped in all the way from Texas. So cute. From all over the country, they were shipping us in Beanie Babies. And I just can't tell you how important it is to be hands-on, even if you're the, even if you feel like you're behind the scenes, just be a part of it. That's all it takes. Uh, you know, an act of kindness today. What, what everything we're going through right now. Oh just, my goodness. Just the act of kindness. It means so much to our veterans, especially now with Afghanistan and what mm. they're all feeling. I won't even get into the political aspect of that, but I know that oh, it's affected a mm. lot of our veterans. Um, to the point where they're questioning themselves and what they did. So any act of kindness that we can give our veterans, I don't, I don't think we could do enough no. for our veterans. And fortunately, you know, after Vietnam, you know, veterans weren't respected at all. Right. They, were, they were spit at, they were called baby killers. It was just a bunch of stuff. I, hopefully, and, and what we have, I think we learned our lesson from the way we treated our veterans to the way we treat them now. Organizations like yours, there's a lot of great organizations oh, out yes. there. Oh yes, oh yes. Thank, thank God that we have these yes. organizations because they are picking up the slack from the VA that mm -hmm. they're not doing. Um, and again, you know, I know they're doing the best they can with what they have to work with, but thank God we've got organizations like yours. And like I said, the little act of kindness by giving a veteran mm -hmm. in a nursing home who doesn't see anybody, has no outside has connections, that means, it's gotta mean the world to him. And it does. We've seen people that are in the homes that, you know, they're very, they're they're in their, that Alzheimer's state where they're in and they're right. out and they're not there and they're there and they're not there and they're there. And you know, we walk up to them, we begin to sing the old songs, the mm -hmm. old, old songs. <laughs> they perk up. They yeah. literally perk up because you see, there's something in their inside, inside. It just and it wants to come stirs up. them up, and right. it gives them like, oh, even if it's a five minute of awareness, or if they're sitting in their in their wheelchair and they don't even well, come out of it. you've seen them all lined up at, mm -hmm. in a nursing home. They're they're just lined they're up. Lined and they're up. Just, we will they're... even put a stocking in their lap. Yeah. We will put a stocking and hang it on their chair. I can't tell you how many beds we've put stockings God on. God bless. Um, it's just been, it's a treasure to do it. But as you know, we all need help. You know, I know I've taken Sam in the hospitals or nursing homes, and you see them all lined up just in a vegetated state. Sam walks in, and if they perk up, they want to reach out and pet Sam, you know, and they get a smile on their yeah. face. So, I mean, it's such a great feeling. I want a to service see horse. Them. 
A what? I want one of those little service <laughs> it's horses. A miniature horse. Yeah, I do. I want a service horse, and I want to be able to take them in because last year at Christmas, I guess one of the people that had, you know, they do carriage rides. Right. They took a miniature donkey uh-huh. to one of the homes we had just delivered to, and they went around to the windows, and so that the people could see the donkey through Aww. the window because you know the donkey's part of the Christmas story. Yeah. And so she was so I was like, I want to have a miniature horse. I want to take a miniature horse. And you and those are uh, approved by the ADA. Yeah. Dogs and miniature horses are sanctioned by the ADA as a service animal. Yeah. You know, um, and it's like I said, just to see the look on their face. Oh, it's it's uh, worth it's priceless. Everything. How can you how can you not walk in a place, give a veteran a stocking, and and just see? That look on your face. It's wonderful. It's got to be the most reward. I'm going to go with you. Oh, yes. I'm yeah, didn't you time. say you're going to Mantino with us? Yes, I am. Good. Yeah. I remember they had a, uh, they had a, um, a veteran there. She had to be 100 years old. Was that Betty? Yes. Yes, I know who Betty is. Oh, my gosh. Because we would a... see her every year. At 100 years old, she was still writing thank you notes. She called me over to the table. She said, Sonny, come here. <laughs> I'm looking at her like, oh, Okay. So I walked over, I sat down, she says, um, can you do me a favor? I went, sure, anything I do. Can you take me home? <laughs> I mean, just so cute. My husband just visited a 99-year-old yeah. woman, veteran, she was Navy, and she said, you got your motorcycle here? He said, yes, I do. She goes, well, before you take me for a ride, do you want to go back to the room with me? Ooh. <laughs> and he's like, oh boy. You know, yeah. but, you know, people, they, st- ladies and gentlemen, I want you to know something. They still have feelings. Oh, yeah. They still care. They still have a life inside of them. Right. And if we can for just one time a year, and we, it's not just Christmas. We do Easter eggs. We do Valentines. We've expanded it because we don't, we don't want them to forget right. that there is a group out there that loves them unconditionally yeah it's uh i think it's just a great when i first was introduced to your group and i thought well let me check this group out let me see what's going on here and the feedback that i got from everybody that i talked to that knew you or knew your organization they all praised it beyond oh that's such a blessing you know what they they couldn't wait to work with you they just thought it was such a great cause and it really is I mean, I, I, I'm looking forward to going with you to Mantino. Oh, we want you to. Oh, I'm going to be there, believe me. Can you bring Sam? I, I can bring Sam with we'll me. We'll make sure we clear it and let him know we're coming yep. in with you yep. and Sam. Yeah, I'll bring Sam and, you know, I, I want to make the rounds. I want to talk to as many as I if can. If they'll let us in. Well, if they'll let us in. Yeah, because with of COVID, COVID now. We don't know, but and we I can wanna, still go to the door. Yeah, and I, I like to bring Sam by the windows. And I and I I want to help pass out these beanie babies. They're I so know. cute. They're, it's adorable. Yeah, they are. I mean, so again, it means so much to these veterans. Why don't you tell us a little bit of what help people can give you? Are you looking for volunteers? Do you do you, do you, I mean, when you stuff these bags, that's got to take an army. Well, actually, we've done it with over the last couple of years with just like eight or nine people. Really? Yeah, because well, that last man. year with COVID, we we did it in shifts of four people because of COVID and everything. Although I'm touching it here, but this has been the the norm since we started. Everything is disinfected because they're senior citizens. Right. And we don't want any infection. So we tell anybody, you got a cold, you can't come in. Uh, you have to sign in. You have to disinfect. And people would say, why am I doing this? Well, you know, we didn't realize COVID would be coming later and that would be the norm. Exactly. But we did that purposely. So if any of you out there are interested in having a drop box in the western suburbs of Chicago, a drop box is a bin that says, be a hero to a hero on it with a list of needs. We will drop it off. And we will pick it up because the month of okay. October, we are having a drive. Well, I just got that terrible two-minute warning. Okay. Okay, give us your website address or your Facebook page. BeAHeroToAHero.com is the charity. And Be a Hero to a Hero Charity for Veterans on Facebook. And hit us up. We want to hear from Teresa, you. Teresa, I can't, I can't thank you enough. Thank you. For, for what you're doing for our veterans. It means, I know it means so much to them. And you, you have a heart of gold, you really do. Um, you're a blessing. What you're doing for our veterans, is it's a blessing. So I want to thank you. Um, and again, if please go to her Facebook page, make a donation, 
um, donate some product or whatever you can yep. donate to them. Anything you could do to help this organization. It's just an amazing group. Yeah, this so. year it's 2,000 veterans is the number that we have this year. Well, I'm going to help you hit that. Thank you. Okay, Teresa. And thank you so much. Thank you so much for being my guest tonight. Thank You're you. You're a great lady. Thank Aww. you. Bye-bye.